Welcome into another episode of the Fat Guy Podcast. My name is uh, Brett. You can just call me Fat Guy. I'll answer to anything, really. Thanks so much for listening today. Whether it's your first episode or your 100th episode, I appreciate having you along. My goal is just to inspire and inform people to take control of their health. My qualifications, I'm a guy who's overweight since I was five or six years old. I've lost 125 pounds and I've spent a ton of time not only just researching and reading and and going through all the papers and studies and all these things, but applying that to my life to achieve the best uh, result possible for myself. Still have a ways to go, but I'm confident that I'll get there because I've cracked the code to obesity and uh, by a happenstance, I guess, uh, crack the code to all the other things that come along with it, uh, all the metabolic diseases, uh, you know, diabetes and heart disease and stroke and cancer and Alzheimer's, all those things are all tied in together. Nevertheless, today's show is Keto 101 Vegetables. If you missed uh, Keto 101 Meats, uh, you can go back and look at that and listen to that as well as we continue our Keto 101 series, so you'll know everything you need to know about going keto. Now, if you're wondering, well, how do I go back and listen to that episode? Well, it's really easy. You can just subscribe to the uh, podcast. If you already consume podcasts on Apple Podcasts or uh, Google Play Store, you know how that works. Just search for Fat Guy Podcast. If you don't know how any of that works, the easiest thing to do is download the Spreaker app. It's a free app, and it's made by the company that hosts my website. S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R, Spreaker. Download it. Once you download it, search for Fat Guy Podcast. Hit that heart button. Subscribe. Make sure you're uh, set up to get notifications about future podcasts that come out. And then you can just simply scroll down and view every podcast I've ever done. And the beautiful thing about that app is it's not just me on there. There's thousands and thousands of other podcasts. Who knows what you may find on there that you'll like. I really love that app. I use it myself. A quick disclaimer, I'm not a medical doctor. I have no formal medical training. Uh, Anything you hear in this podcast is simply my personal opinion or me sharing my personal experiences. Nothing I say should be construed as dietary uh, advice strictly for you, weight loss advice strictly for you, or medical advice strictly for you. You should consult a doctor uh, for your health or anything uh, weight-related. And that's a... uh, There's no give or take on that. That's just the way that goes 100%. If you're a person who listens uh, diligently and you've gained something from the podcast, or uh, not only for yourself, but you think that what I'm doing is is good to help other people, and maybe it's changed your life and you want to make sure I'm still able to keep doing it to change others' lives, uh, I've now set up a way you can support me using the Patreon platform. It's real easy to get there. Um, all you have to do is um, go to ketoanimal.com, K-E-T-O-A-N-M-N-I-M-A-L, ketoanimal.com, five bucks, and um, you get some cool perks with that. We'll give you shout outs on future podcasts, let everybody know that you're a proud sponsor. Uh, we'll also have uh, sponsor-only podcasting content that will be hosted over at Patreon. You'll get notified about that when it's posted, and you'll be able to go to, able to check that out. And you'll also have access to me on the Patreon community section. So if you're a Patreon supporter for the five bucks, you'll get private access to ask me questions and uh, I'll try to help you any way I can. I already try to help everybody, but uh, you move to the front of the line basically is how that works. If you aren't following us on social media, Fat Guy Podcast is a username on all platforms, whether it be Facebook, uh, Twitter, or Instagram. So make sure you follow us there as well. I think I got all the business out of the way, so let's talk about veggies, shall we? As I mentioned earlier, we talked about meats and Keto 101, the meat section, and uh, you really should go back and review that because meats are the most important part about what you do. I'd say vegetables, um, and I'm going to include grains and starches and all this stuff in with vegetables, okay? And uh, so this is a combination of do's and don'ts. There were a few don'ts in the meat section, but it was mostly a lot of do's. Um, I'd say do's and don'ts are kind of mixed evenly in the vegetable section. So eating vegetables is important for a couple reasons. One, uh, they're a good source of potassium. And secondarily, they're a decent source of micronutrients. There's a lot of debate and a lot of research out there that, that is debunking now 
how many vegetables or how much vegetables you need to eat. That being said, I don't know that it's smart to cut out all vegetables, uh, but I think at least we know that you don't have to eat as much as we thought you needed to eat before. I think all the new research is kind of leaning in that direction. Um, that is provided that you're eating really quality cuts of meat, like uh, organic grass-fed beef primarily, uh, working in some organ meats, you know, like liver, some beef liver, working that in occasionally, and also working in uh, high-quality um, wild-caught fish like wild-caught salmon, etc., that has a high, high uh, omega-3s in it. If you're staying on top of your nutrition from the meat standpoint, then the, your uh, reliance on vegetables, I think, is is much, much lower. Another inter- Before I get to the vegetables, another interesting thing about that is there's all these studies out now about constipation. People worry about constipation and how you got to have a lot of fiber from vegetables. Um, there's two different studies. One of them, very impressive, conducted on a lot of people. And another one that's uh, pretty solid as well that showed conclusively that um, the higher you go with dealing with this uh, fiber from vegetables actually induces more <laughs> constipation. And in both of these studies, when they dropped the participants down to zero fiber, where they were eating no fiber, they're basically just eating meat and some dairy. There was no fiber from any vegetable involved. They dropped down to zero constipation. Zero. It's quite phenomenal. I thought I'd throw that in as a side. Nevertheless, um, vegetables are fine and you should eat them. Uh, they add taste. They add variety. They add color to your plate. And uh, most people enjoy side dishes that have vegetables. So uh, I think the first thing we should say is um, if you grew up like I did in the South, but this applies to pretty much anywhere in the Western world, we were taught things like uh, potatoes, um, corn, these things are vegetables. And those things are not vegetables, they're starches. And so I find that when people go keto, that's the first problem they have wrapping their head around. It's like, you mean potatoes and corn? That's not a vegetable, huh? It's a what? Yeah, it's not a vegetable, it's a starch. So what you want to be eating is green leafy vegetables. These are things that grow and thrive above ground primarily. They're green in color and they have very low carbs, low net carbs, and they're very high in phytonutrients. They don't have many calories to them. They're basically just there for phytonutrients and fiber is basically what you get out of them. But you can season them up. They can taste good and people like their veggies. Some people really like their veggies. Some people hate them. Um, Just depends on who you are. Nevertheless, they're considered part of a meal and so uh, including vegetables in your meal. So if you're taking notes, and again, the beautiful thing about podcasts is you can pause, you can hit the rewind button. If you miss something, you can go back and catch it. But we're going to go through a list of what I think is the best uh, vegetables that you should consume. These are the low-carb, really healthy, green, leafy vegetables. And if you mix and match them every day, you'll have a wide variety to get you, you know, week after week after week. I find that most of us just like a few vegetables, and that's what we eat. And I know that's true for me. My go-tos are broccoli, some cauliflower, um, squash, um, asparagus, and greens. Uh, Mustard greens or collard greens. And uh, that's pretty much it. (laughs) So here we go. Your list of uh, vegetables. Broccoli, which I just mentioned. Brussels sprouts, obviously. Cabbage cauliflower, celery, uh, cucumber, uh, garlic, which is really a seasoning, but you can uh, season your food with garlic is fine. Um, uh, Leeks. I don't know anybody that eats leek. Actually, I didn't used to know a person that eat leeks, but people that eat it love it. Uh, Any variety of lettuce, mushrooms, uh, okra, uh, not battered and uh, breaded and fried okra. (laughs) Uh, You're getting into a whole new animal there. Uh, Onions, primarily for seasoning. You don't eat a ton of onions, but using a little onion for seasoning is fine. Green peppers. Now, you'd be surprised the difference in carbohydrates between, like, for instance, red bell peppers and yellow bell peppers and green bell peppers. It's a huge difference. So avoid the red and the yellows and stuff. But green peppers is fine, especially green bell pepper. Uh, Radishes, spinach tomatoes, zucchini, 
uh, and probably my favorite, and this is an acquired taste for people, but sauerkraut. And sauerkraut is really good because you get the active cultures in it, which is really good for your microbiome and your gut health. And uh, I love sauerkraut. I can never get enough uh, sauerkraut. I'd say it's a pretty comprehensive list of vegetables you can eat. Um, if you mix and match those uh, every day, I think I left asparagus out of there. Asparagus is definitely on the list, though. Um, if you mix and match those every day, you're going to be fine. And uh, I think you'll have enough variety that you'll be uh, happy with it. So we're going to talk about the don'ts. So there's veggies or things that we've considered to be veggies on the list uh, that you're not going to be able to eat anymore. And then we're going to include in that these grains and starches and stuff. So the government has told us for years, you got to eat all these seven, six, five, six, seven servings of whole grain. Oh, so many carbs. Is it any wonder that we all are overweight and we all have diabetes? Uh, carbs are sugar. Um, I should do a whole podcast just on that alone because people seem confused about it. But don't be confused. Carbs are sugar. There's no difference in carbs and sugars. No difference. Uh, carbs from like potatoes or bread or stuff. As a matter of fact, bread has a higher glycemic index, which means it shoots and impacts your uh, blood sugar more than just eating straight table sugar out of a bowl. <laughs> just give you some good old granulated sugar and put it in a bowl and eat it, and it will not have the glycemic effect on your blood sugar that eating bread will. And bread is just has uh, carbs in it. It's just starches. Carbs are really easily broken down in the body, and they're immediately converted to glucose. So it's it's the same thing. There's no different. Starches, um, uh, it's carbs, sugar, it's all the same thing. So you have to avoid them, and this is tough for people. This, this comes down to, for some people, what they consider make or break for wanting to try a keto diet. But I'm going to tell you this. Once you're off it, uh, I'd say... You know, 10 days to two weeks, your cravings for it go to near zero. And as long as you will stay faithful to eating keto, you'll never really have to deal with those cravings too much anymore. Now, uh, if you slip up and you up your carbs at some point and you indulge in some sugar or something, all those cravings are going to come back. <clears throat> Sorry. Sorry about that. All those cravings are going to come back. So... What does this include? What is it we can't eat anymore? You're dying to know, right? Well, bread. There's no breads. There's no cereals. Breakfast cereals are between 70 and 90% sugar. Um, I actually did a video of this on the Fat Guy uh, podcast Facebook page. Um, you could probably go there and click videos. It probably wouldn't be too hard for you to find it. But breakfast cereals, and this is even the healthy ones, the Special K or uh, Grape Nuts or... Um, uh, whole wheat, you know, any of these things that they pronounce as being uh, healthy, quote unquote healthy or horrible, they're, you know, even those are in the 70%, 60, 70% sugar range. And then you get into like the frosted flakes and the fruit loops and the, all these kinds of things. Those things are like 90% sugar. And uh, if you don't believe me, first of all, remember what I told you carbs are sugar. There's no difference. Sugar is carbs, carbs are sugar. Next time you go to the grocery store, pick up a cereal box and look at how many grams are a serving. So this will be a total serving size, and it'll say something like 65 grams or something. Then go down to carbohydrates and see how many grams of carbohydrates are in that serving size, and you'll be shocked. It'll be like 50 or something, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, somewhere in that neighborhood. So out of the, out of the 65 grams of total product you're putting in your mouth, Around 50 or 52 of those grams are sugar. It's 90% sugar. But I digress. Um, anything wheat related, whole wheat, whatever. Um, corn, obviously. Crackers, can't have crackers anymore. No more beans or lentils or anything like that. Oats, got to let oats go. Pasta, obviously, is off the list. Um, yep, that includes pizza too. Pizza crust is just nothing but sugar and carbs, and they use really high carb pasta sauce on it as well. Peas, I mentioned beans before, but peas, um, uh, potatoes, doesn't matter if it's a white potato, russet potato, sweet potato, doesn't matter. Uh, quinoa, rice, uh, rye bread, any, any kind of bread that they've told you is healthy, like whole wheat bread or anything like that. 
any kind of flour, doesn't matter. None of that stuff. You can't have that stuff anymore. It's all carbs. It's all sugar. It's just all sugar. And um, you got to let it go. Um, the last thing that I'm going to include on this list uh, is fruits. Now, the reason I'm including it in the vegetables podcast is because I think this podcast is a little bit shorter than meat because I didn't have quite as much to say. And when you hear dietary recommendations from the government or these dietary people, they always lump fruits and vegetables together. You need seven servings of fruits and vegetables. Well, fruits are out. Uh, you, just, you just can't eat fruits. Fruits are just loaded with sugar. And um, it's simple sugars, and so it goes right directly in the body. They don't even have to break it down for the most part. Um, depending on the fruits, high in fructose, which is very bad in the liver, especially if you're diabetic, pre-diabetic, or obese. And so you got to let all that go. You just can't, uh, you can't have the uh, fruits. Now, after you've been keto a while... And uh, I'd say after you've been keto uh, six weeks or minimum, minimum of six weeks, you've been keto and you've been good about it and you've been faithful to it. If once a week you want to work in, uh, you know, a strawberry or a raspberry or a blackberry or even blueberries, but you got to be very careful blueberries. They are the har- highest carb of the berries. But you could work those in. So if you find yourself missing fruit, you know, fruit, fruit you can't have, but you can have some berries. And so, again, that's raspberries are the lowest carb. Strawberries uh, are, and blackberry is next. And then blueberry is the highest carb. And um, so, you know, it's a once every week kind of treat or something. Figure out a way to work in some berries into your diet. You know, have you a handful of them or whatever. Um, but pretty much uh, fruits are out. And I know you're thinking, well, all this stuff is healthy, man. All this you're talking about so much healthy stuff. Well, if you were a, a normal person who hadn't wrecked your metabolism and you weren't insulin resistant and you weren't either pre diabetic or diabetic, you if you're not pre diabetic or diabetic officially diagnosed, quote unquote, but you have a huge gut, you're pre diabetic. They just haven't diagnosed you yet because you haven't met their qualifications. You are insulin resistant. Your body does not process sugar well. Otherwise, you wouldn't have that big gut. And so once you get to that metabolic state, your metabolism is damaged. You know, you have uh, metabolic dysregulation. You have metabolic syndrome. And so what might be considered healthy in moderation for a normal person with a healthy uh, insulin response is not healthy for you. And it, and it really never will be. So, sure, if uh, you're raising kids and you want to treat them to uh, uh, watermelon, you know, two, three times over the summer and, uh, you know, once a week or so, you want to treat them to some fruit or something, you can absolutely work that in as a healthy part of a diet. Um, But if you already have metabolic dysregulation, metabolic syndrome, it's just out. You just can't have that anymore. So, um. I hope that this helps. If you want to go back and take notes, you can write the vegetables down and the no-nos down. And um, I hate to make it sound restrictive because there's so many vegetables you can eat and they're all delicious and they can be created in so many different ways um, that it's really nothing that you're going to be concerned about. And the meat on your plate is going to be the primary primary part of your diet anyway. And you're going to learn it's the most delicious, it's the most filling, it's the most satisfying, it's the most satiating. Um... Um, so why should you even worry about green leafy vegetables? Like why worry at all? And I, and I can give you just one reason. Um, so we've talked about, I believe we talked about in, the, in previous podcasts. I definitely have a podcast all about electrolytes. So you can scroll back um, if you're not familiar with electrolytes. But on a ketogenic diet, when you're not, you don't have a bunch of glycogen stores, which is the body storage system way of storing sugar. When you let all that go and it's out, then your body lets go of a lot of water and it lets go of a lot of electrolytes in the process. They're flushed right out through the kidneys. And so it's very important that you keep your potassium levels up and potassium comes from uh, green leafy vegetables. They're very high in potassium. So um, two to four cups a day, I think, is, is about the minimum that I'd recommend. I've seen some keto guru say you should have six or seven cups of green leafy vegetables a day i think that's really out there i don't think that's necessary at all um 
But I think you put a cup to a cup and a half of vegetables on your lunch plate and a cup to a cup and a half of vegetables on your dinner plate, you're going to be fine. And um, your potassium levels are probably going to be fine. And um, that that that's just my experience. Again, I'm not a medical professional. Have no medical training. Consult with your doctor before you get any diet, weight loss, or health program. Thank you so much for listening today. If you enjoy the podcast, you enjoy the information, and I've helped you in any kind of way, and you'd like to help me help others, consider uh, becoming a Patreon a sponsor. Uh, you sponsoring this show would be awesome. You know, I don't allow advertisers on here. I can't tell you how many products I've had tried to get me to shield their products. Mainly, these are these ones that are trying to shield these uh, exogenous uh, ketones, you know, these BHB salts and these uh, keto OOSs and prove it's and stuff. And I just don't accept advertising from them. I don't do it because I don't, uh, you, you get into a tricky road there. And I'm like, you know, if people if, uh, if people want to support me, I'll accept that. And so ketoanimal.com is the address. And uh, just put on there that you want to join that tier, the uh, Keto Warrior tier, and uh, you'll get all the benefits I mentioned earlier. The most important thing you can do is spread the word. Share this on your social media. Hit that share button and share it on your Twitter. Share it on your Facebook and uh Help me change lives. That's what my one goal in life. Appreciate you so much listening today. Our next episode of Keto 101 will be coming up, and we are going to be talking about snacks, desserts, and drinks in the next episode. We'll talk to you then.